Oh my god, you guys, I'm Radio Rebel. I'm Radio Rebel. I got a new job as a radio host. So I'm very excited. Today we're playing a new game. It came out like last month or two months ago called Killer Frequency. It looks fun. It's so it said it's a horror comedy. So we're going to be screaming and we're going to be laughing tonight. Ricky Rebel. Whoa, why am I just appearing in a dumpster? Yeah, I'm already spooked. But it was a horror comedy, so... What was that? We'll be laughing too tonight, you guys. What else? Where's my job, my new job? Oh. This must be my new job. Are that stacks of money? Oh no. It's not. Let's close the door behind us. Oh. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm here. Radio Rebel Headquarters. What the hell is this? Wait, how do I inspect things again? Oh. I can't read that. something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is, but I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... Okay, but here we are. I love the, yeah, I love the art style. I think I'm a forest, the guy talking. Oh, we can, we can pick choices. Let's do the check, sure. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, What's stick the it on the player, and hit play. Easy. <gasps> Am I doing that? <gasps> Whoa. Oh my God, I'm a DJ. Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick hold it on your the horses. Target. I'm looking around. Oh, oh, cool. The record box is on the left, and the record player is on the right. Pick a record and stick it on the turntable. Then hit play. Cool. Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record. I'm and going. Stick it on the okay. Turntable. Oh, I did it. The record box is on the left, and the record player is on the right. Pick a record and stick it oh. on the turntable. Then hit play. Got it. Great. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? Is she flirting with me? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Oh, I've already tested this out. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I... 
thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Is she gonna talk the whole time? Okay, you're live in three. I can't get a word two, in. Oh, I'm live. Good Whoa. evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Right. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. <laughs> this is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. I'm so they enthusiastic. Toe, saw off a finger or discover the corpse of a loved one. That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... I'm gonna drown her out. Are you serious? Really, Peggy? You want, you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? He does have a nice voice. Boys, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close and then call in to guess that scream. Oh, I get to pick what kind of scream I'm doing. Let's be a Yeti. <sighs> Well, right. folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Oh, this is the soundboard. Fried dough. Just call in at 555 I can cricket myself. KFAM with your guess. I'll be using that one on Peggy. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Oh, I can, okay. Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. <laughs> I love this. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Oh, I know how to Time do that. To turn the music off. Don't tell me what to do. I'll turn it off if I want to. I bet I should. Okay. Oh. Wait, that one. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. <laughs> and? Oh. Are you calling to guess that scream? Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No! Look, I found a body oh. and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. <laughs> Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. 
Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never <laughs> happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... I love the soundboard. Oh. I don't, I don't understand. Where are the other officers? Do they know? Have they secured the scene or, or whatever cops are supposed to do? No, I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Hick town. Don't be ridiculous. We have three, but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Sorry, guys, the soundboard's malfunctioning. Bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murder around the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come into you. Why? Why me? I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. I can move around. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Well, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Whoops. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell. And the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. Yeah, there's gotta be more keys. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Yeah, check on his body. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. I... Might be them. Whoa! I'm so I, smart. I, I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? <laughs> I, I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martina. There we go. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. 
I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. We can handle it around. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risk right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't... Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? What's that noise? It sounds like... Whistling? Whistling? <laughs> it can't be. Oh, my God. I can see him, but... He's dead, right? Right? With that mask and... Who, Leslie? Who? The Whistling Man! The Whistling Man? Who's the Whistling Man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead! He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Whoa, that was timed, you guys. Okay, let me focus. We need a new plan. My focus. car's torched. We need to think. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh... Let's just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. This is crazy. But wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. What should I take? I'm gonna do Taser. Although Pepper Spray, like, well, he has a mask on. Taser. I mean, it's gotta be the Taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly, it's gone quiet. No more knocking. Oh. Maybe the freak left. Be careful. I'm gonna say that. Maybe the freak decided to up and leave. Maybe. I think that may be wishful thinking. But I can't see him out there anymore, so... Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. We have a tape. She has a taser. Should be okay. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck. Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. This is crazy. I'm hooked. You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. <laughs> Good one. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call I bet her. my taser idea was what saved Hello? her. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over.
Hello, Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. We did. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to. Maybe he's in the car. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get get back! What? Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? Is he actually in the car? The whistling. No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! I was right. Taser. Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Leslie, are you two okay? Did you get away? Or... Forrest, that taser? Definitely the right call. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the boat. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get home? Gallows Creek has a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. You better floor it. You keep that pedal to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Oh. I got a Folks, you heard it an here. achievement for saving you Deputy Martinez. Killer on the streets of Gallows Creek. I bet the taser, I mean the make sure to stay pepper safe. spray doesn't work. And Leslie, because of the mask. We're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show. Okay. In a while. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now. Here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Let me do a different one. There we go. Oh. It's funky, it's groovy, it's Stab in the Twilight by Knife and Easy. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's going to take her four hours? This guy's going to kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this whistling man character? Edward Marshall Moody. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just... Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. Well, sounds like he's right. back. That's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At that. Why can't I throw it in there? Oh. Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35, yeah. It's a school night. 35. What's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my 
career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? What can you dream of that? Five million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet, I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? Except request. I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice this to This is definitely us. a someone cranking. A sacrifice? To us? I, I mean, me! We want cheese dusted pretzel. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. You're little shits, you know that? There's been death tonight. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> man, suck it, old man! Gallows hide for one! <laughs> for anyone just tuning in, we do, in fact, have an actual killer out on the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. I get it just fast. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's David Scopo with Moonlight. Peggy, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Ugh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny. But it's not. It's not funny at all. I got one. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh. I need the sheriff right Here we away. go. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name? And what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get help in from Henderson now. actually happening where are you now did you escape to somewhere safe oh i did baby i just ran all the way to my car and nothing flat but i dropped my key somewhere along Excuse the me? way i never locked the door so i've got a place to hide but i can't get moving 
Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I... Point sixteen, the scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something. Timberline Twins talk motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. So what am I looking at for the, the Timberland Town Twins? I'm loving this game so far. It's so fun. It's campy, good music. Where am I going? I feel like Sandra's gonna die. This is probably the office, right? Sandra's probably not making out of this one, but I'll do my best. I don't even know where to start. Good graphic, Fricky. Thank you. Thank you. What am I looking for? Like a tape or something? This has to be important. Oh! The first thing I pick up. Twins, I've borrowed your car. Theft magazine. Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. That wasn't very helpful. But I mentioned, oh, maybe this is where they. Oh, didn't she mention a magazine? Oh, look in the bathroom. How do I, how do I get rid of this magazine? I think it's over for Sandra, because I don't know what I'm looking for here. We're looking for a show. What does that mean? What is this? Oh. This looks useful. Oh. You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. When you're ready, shut the music off. How do I drop the other one? <laughs> All right. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? I don't know. What? Am I supposed to actually research this? Hit the steering wheel with the hammer. How do I read this? Well, it's probably this. I'll unscrew the steering column. Exactly what you see. Okay. We can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. 
Okay, I'm supposed to be reading something then because. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God. I feel like I'm playing that um escape room game. Oh, no, the. The one about the bomb. I forgot what it's called. Okay. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Shoot, I missed it. Did anyone memorize that? I'm, I'm trying to get a picture of it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Happy to have a chat here. Okay. If there is a four before a three, there is. And no seven. There is a seven. If there is a six anywhere and doesn't start with a five, there is a five. Okay. There is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six. Got it. Red and yellow. Strip and twist red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Me when I'm about to get murdered. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Just keep driving now, okay? I should have said lay off the job. Get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. Done with this. We saved her! I thought she was done for. We did it, Forrest! We sure did. I've saved two we lives. Another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. Listen in to this next track from Late This Night is fun. Wars, if you dare. I want to hear... I still can't believe this is I kind of want to hear a death. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? Peggy, be honest, it's a dump. There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Got another one. You don't notice the stink after a while. After a while, you don't even notice the smell? I guess that's nice. Smell? What the? There's no smell. <laughs> you, you've lived here your whole life, Peggy. You wouldn't recognize it by now. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. And that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Twelve forty-two. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of one eighty-nine point sixteen, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. <gasps> Brian this sounds Ponty good right now. Of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Haunty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. 
And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you <gasps> some for free pizza here at Ponte's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh. I wouldn't be saying that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'll be nice. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, thank you for this. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Pony's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Potty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Don't forget. Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Uh, now, a word from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. The cassette player is on the desk in front of you, just above the sound blaster. There should be a cassette in the dock. Hush. I got it. Done. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back. We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got Giblet the Field. Princess Harvest Pageant. What does this do? Okay. Country music, can jam, jazz, jellies, jamborees, juggling, roller, Ricky, was it? roller disco lessons. What did you say about me? We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest. Keep horses, my name out of your mouth. Toss. Hey, you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bob and bar, roller bar, Ricky. That's kind of cute, actually. I hope I didn't have to know any of that. I, I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here for us. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. Oh, we have a caller. Sorry, I'm Red Rebel. We have a call waiting. Welcome to the scream with me, Forrest Nash. All right. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs. And... Uh oh. Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to uh -oh. speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? I am 911. I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. That was a little rude. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness what the happened? incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. Never mind that. Tell me what's happening there. You said there's been a break-in? That's nothing to get worked up I bet about. it's the whistler. Some idiot kid oh. just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> You're about to die, Maurice. They get worse every year. And this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. And now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? Upstairs. The music. We got security cameras all around the building. Go 
watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. <laughs> Think you can take the whistling man? Let me say that. Think you might be up for fighting the whistling man? Son! I am 55 years old. If this freak killed Sheriff Matthews, <laughs> I don't like my chances. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. <whistles> Blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with what? different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. And get an exclusive interview with the killer. That could be interesting. No, I mean we just make a distraction. I don't think you're gonna fall for that. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. He's a little Peggy annoying. Just trying to figure out. Maybe I'll let him die. You realize how stupid that plan is. It does sound, sound pretty stupid. Right? Yeah. For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. What have I got myself into this time? This must be it. Oh, he drew it. All right. Hey, did you get the fox? Yes, I have. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. I want it on. Mr. Russell, you, uh, oh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah. I got it right here. Good. My eyes. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, he's folks, a little rude. We're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Yeah. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Where's Maurice? Is he in the boardroom? Yeah, facts, okay. So we're gonna put him in the editors. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Kitchen, right? You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. 
It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Just go to the stairs and leave. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. Oh, it's barricaded. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. God, I got here. You said that. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could. Oh! Call incoming. This show is ready? crazy. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. Not quickly, or quietly. <laughs> Maybe play dead? Let's lock him in a room. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. A damn fire regulation. Say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Uh -oh. He'd be able to get out just as soon as. Wait, 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 no, 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 I got it. The secret archive through my office, where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Now's not the time, Peggy. Peggy, I don't think now's the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Okay. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. Let's do it. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret well, archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports room. Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we don't might even so save excited. the whole how town. We, how are we gonna get the radio into the secret archives? Yeah, don't get excited yet. There's still a lot to do before we celebrate. Let's just see how it goes first. <laughs> what do you mean? He's not out of there yet. We still gotta find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know, but we've got a plan for how to do that. And, oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. It's funny that this whole thing is on live radio. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, goddammit. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? Go to our channel, the and I'll turn the music down. Dead. You just... Oh. Then turn it back on when you're back in there. But wait, we're the radio. 
We can just be quiet until you're ready. Yep. <laughs> if you can do that, then... That was my idea, Peggy. I said it first. Sure. 189.16. I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? You got it. 189.16. Good. I've got the radio on silent. But I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? So yeah, we need to move him so they can go into there. So we, okay. So, I would say the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero. This four. is so fun. That might work. I love this. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? What? That's where he was before though. Yeah, do it. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak to slip. That's pretty good. What a great plan this is, Pearl. Uh, I'll give you an I it was A good. for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far. If he's Dash. walking towards a voice, he's not going to look under the desk. Hide under the desk. So you can swoop right out and lock it. Hide under the desk. All right. Well, that's kind of risky, but let's see. I'm down to risk it on him. Going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I'm 50 50 on this, um, if this will work, so. He might die. Let's see. Listen to your old pal, Russell Forrest, and shut up. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, shit. I had a timer. Forrest Dash, you son of a bitch! I told you to... Forrest, he's... He's... Out of print. <sighs> what? Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks. Well, done with that. I'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call. I thought my plan was pretty good. What does she mean I didn't give enough time? I had a timer. I had to make a, I had to make a choice. Whatever. That guy was rude to me anyway. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Well, this is gonna be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. Are you sure about that? You're not I love how campy this is. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded. Like, in we just history. heard someone die, now we're just, we moved on from that. Shoot, what do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. No, that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you <laughs> Whistling Man's still listening. Yeah, the radio's in there. I don't. <laughs> I'm an only 
child and my folks are dead. I love this game. I'm sorry, Forrest. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check How it out? How about you check it out? Yeah. I'm the one who always walking sure around. You don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Oh, she moves. She moves. Can I, can I hold a weapon? I'm gonna get a weapon really quick. I saw a screwdriver in here. You never know, might need this. Oh, or a wrench. I'll take this. I'm scared. Well, that was ominous. A tape. Play on air. Now that was definitely the killer out there. Gonna be a message from him. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. Spooky. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how the killer could get from the newspaper to KFAM so quick, but... Hmm. Be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. <laughs> oh, it's 104. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches bad. How about that one? This is a new stab in the twilight. Very, very relevant to the tonight. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. You're right there. Why don't you do it? Just go get it. She's bossy. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. But he wrote it in purple. Who's Reggie? And? Purple is Reggie's angry color. He only writes in purple when he's really pissed off. Purple message. All right. I'll put it on. I hope it's nothing serious. Or try your call again. <laughs> Straight to voicemail? My God. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. 
I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina. You know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know, Roddy Snatcher? Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. Oh, I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. Whoa. And I can't believe Roddy you didn't tell sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fan, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well... If that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. This music is so good. Look at a closer look at Peggy. She's hard to see. I'm suspicious of her too. Why would she leave that room? His new hit single, Last Breath, also very relevant to tonight. What am I looking for here? What? What the hell? Uh oh, Brad dumped Barb. Try opening the binder. Good idea. I found it. it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. I'm ready for our next killer moment. Wait. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. I love. Gallows I Creek. I'm stuff. pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Where'd it go? Is it in here? Oh, it is. Okay. This better be good. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Frank. That's it? I don't get to hear it? I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, we just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. Peggy's so silly. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. This is Murphy. <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. Oh. I've learned how to this live. This guy's a dad. I, I gotta keep him alive. Laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough. Uh oh. Big man with a big knife. Huh? Prove it. 
This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbins' Gold Joe series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. Oh, no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed. I'll do my best to save him, but he's he looking to get killed. To our Can't feel too sorry for someone like that. Anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Oh, a map of the town. This might come in handy. Oh, look, there I am. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the I'm a pro DJ, you guys. Me, Forrest Nash. Look what I'm doing. Not this again. Who's there? Who is this? Are you okay? Do you need help? Please let it Forrest, be a victim. He called me. That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me. Jesus. Yay. Listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done I'm this excited. a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them or? Sure. We did lose one guy. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Right. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Maybe you can hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Can you run out back? Three things. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away hey. tonight. Nothing worse than just a fraternity down the street. A fraternity. You live by a frat house. Yes. Oh, I They're saw that. Party and takeout coming in all night. Pawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get Oh god. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout! If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't be a child! Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do this! Well, folks... Seems like our Virginia hung up while we try to figure out what takeout to order. Here's some music for your own midnight snacks. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. This is so hey, funny. What places do takeout and Like we just go into music after that. Off the top of my head, uh, well, there's the barbecue place. Grilling spree. Grilling spree. And you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Chalupa Cabra. Oh, and then of course we have Auntie's Pizza. That's it, I think. Didn't I see a frat house on here or did I make that up? Did I hallucinate? Alright. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related and maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. All right. God, where to start? 
Let me get my weapon. I would make me order from somewhere if I were a pizza. partying friend. I would order from Honey's Pizza. They have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Alright. I just have to look around. Man, why are there so many bugs? Why the... Okay, uh... What am I looking for here? Ooh, that's a good weapon. Oh, so I'm looking for like a menu to call? That's what's going on here? That's what I'm assuming. I'm ready for the killer if he comes to get me! Double fisting weapons. Oh! Through trash. This is a new one. Got run. it. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallo's High performed. Yeah, and the free beer is definitely it. Frat Boys would love that. Hey, find anything useful? Um, yes. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. What'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Fratman calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread! Can't do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. All right. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are... Fans of Ponty's Pizza. We sure are. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. I feel like I've played everything now, so now I'm gonna start doing a little repeat. Wait, maybe we can hear Final Breath now. Nope. I want this. There we go. No, yeah. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Breath. Why does it always cut out? Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh. I mean, they're all pretty equal. You mean equally good? I'm yeah. this though. Not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right. So between grilling spree and chalupa coppers. I mean, chalupa coppers cut. sounds good. Do I want a plate full of meat, or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I. Hold that thought for us. We've got a call coming in. Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Fratman Bunker. We got some garlic bread and a note to call this number. <laughs> yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And. Plunker, this is an emergency. I. Nice try, Goose. I may be drunk, but I'm no fool. 
Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brother is awaiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. How can I prove this to you? <laughs> Let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says... Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, Rio Man. I'm get such a good DJ. Attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Fucker's moving the house. Forest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, the stream. Forest, it's the killer. He's at the door. He's. Oh my God, it's it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk. I promise. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> we saved her. Yes. All right, three out of four is not bad. You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Funker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Yeah, what was that about? Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. Got an achievement for and keeping her alive. If you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have only one dad, and he was kind of mean. So we're doing good so far. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. No. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. <laughs> oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! Oh. The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two-for-one. Got me there. God damn it, Ponty, no. No free ads. Funny. <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did say I like Ponty. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. <sighs> just take a deep breath and let's keep going. I want to play music. When you're ready, shut the music off. All right. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Right. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. Eugene. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze. Listening to your show. I saw that ticket for that. Looking up the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost.
lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour uh -oh, ago. Uh-oh, she will be dead. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. <laughs> go home to your parents. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. We hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! That's probably the killer. It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. Good talking. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no! This is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst. Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. Hide. And call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry! He's actually the first one that's actually freaked out. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I... I feel delivered, like... Here's a track for all you lovers out there. The rest were like silly. I guess... The lady in the house was pretty freaked out. Oh, oh. I just played that. No, okay. I'm a good DJ, I promise. I'm ready to rebel. Alright. You're gonna love this next track. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze. I saw the ticket down there. Barbara then? Oh, she's so Barbara got dumped by maze. that Brad. Could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff. I saw the ticket already. Go and see what you can find. I know exactly where to go. All right, the ticket was right here. But what does this do for me? Okay. Uh Oh, here's what I was looking for. I saw this earlier. Okay. We are going to save him. We have a maze map. Any luck? For Eugene? Yes. For Barbara? No. Brad canceled the date. So Barbara left her tickets and a map for the maze maze behind. Oh, Barbara can do better. Never mind. Let's save the kid. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest. No. Shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. That was loud. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Oh, God. So I gotta lead him out of the maze? Okay, so he's right there. So uh, we need to get him out of here. What, is the, what are the options? Oh, okay. Why can I find the way out? Okay, hold on. We gotta find the way out, and then I'll help him. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Hang on, Eugene. Let me put you on hold. Oh, I just found it. Okay, go left. Go left. Good. Go backwards. Go backwards. Oh God. Why didn't I just fight her over? Is that a chainsaw? I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. 
Which way? Left. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay. Go left. gonna go right. Go right. Right. You should end up at the corn silo. I can't run much more. I just passed a corn okay. silo. Didn't see anything else. Wait, where's he? he passed it, so go forward, go right, go left. Oh, he must be at that crossroad. So I would say go right. Go right. Yay! I saved him! Play that. Oh, thank you, Boris. You're welcome, Eugene. You get I to see you, Molly. You get to see Molly. Woo! That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I liked that one. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. This is so much fun. 149. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up for us, so take it away. I want to play music. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. The scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. I don't know about wonderful, but uh, thanks. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune, sure. Long ride home. That old song, sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think yeah, you're I gonna don't... find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I, I threw it out the window earlier today. Okay. Yeah. Why? Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks, here comes some unrequested music. <laughs> Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song, for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Fine. 
Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest. Oh, oh my right. God. All right. It's me again. Murphy. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn police of me. He came for the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in you a dump. You literally dump. asked for it. I got a flashlight. But oh, oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he's starting a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. This is the guy that called out the killer to come fight him. Hey, get the fire department on the line. He asked for it. On it. But I'll, we'll save him. We got him. All right. Now just come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? Oh. He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save them. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. I heard this thing her whole contact list. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Try. Can you repeat those names again, girl? Oh, thank you. Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road. Right next to Romero Street. There it is. Haddonfield. So Alex lives there. Catherine lives at the at the west end of Myers Lane. Let's find that. Old Man Jericho lives at the the east end of Myers Lane. Oh, that's closer. So, yeah, how much? How how old is this old man? Alex might not be a bad idea. That's not too far. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Alex. Call Alex. All right, give me a second. A traffic notice? Oh. I didn't read that. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there well, in time. Well, too late now. Murphy will be burnt to a crisp. But let's see. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away. Too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. So Murphy is... Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, Fernando will be crushed. Just like his dad. <laughs> <It's> a, uh, <clears throat> poor kid. Forrest, that... I wasn't trying to set you up for a punchline. No, I know. <laughs> Ugh. Damn. Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Poor guy. I would try to okay. save him. It's going to be over. Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. <laughs> this game is so funny. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say.
Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. That guy did ask for it. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this off time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know you're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. You're a prick, Teddy. I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, yeah, I'm cutting what, you where's off. Where's he going with this? You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? The Whistling Man. Yeah, how about the goddamn serial killer? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. All right. We're going to stop there for tonight. I was hoping to see one of those games that you could finish in one sitting, but it says it was about five hours to play, so we'll finish it next time. To be continued. So, we saved how many people? Two died. One of them was kind of mean to us. The other one literally asked for it, so what can you do? Everyone else was nice, and we saved them. I think we saved four people, right? Saved four, didn't save two. So, that's pretty good. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. And to be continued.